thank you. Uh, actually, the first thank you goes to Helen Caldicott, who, <clears throat> who put on this symposium, which is a staggering task, and uh, who was kind enough to, to invite me to present. So again, Helen, thank you so much. Um, my topic is going to be um, about the uh, article that was published five days ago in the Open Journal of Pediatrics about the uh, changes in newborn hypothyroidism uh, in the United States after Fukushima. But first, let me give you just a 30-second thumbnail about the group I work with, um, for those of you who don't know. Um, Radiation Public Health was founded in 1989. We are an organization independent of government and of industry. We um, are con we consist of health professional scientists and we work with citizens and our mission is to publish uh, medical uh, journal studies and to present these uh, findings to the public on the health risks of exposure to fission products. Uh, and uh, to that end, we have the one I'm talking about today will be number 31. Uh, we have a 32nd coming up later this, uh, this month. Um, there's no, no stopping here. And we've also done um, eight books. The most recent one here is called Mad Science, published by OR Books uh, last fall. And I urge you all to go online and, and take a look at it if you're interested. Now. Before I go into the actual mechanics of, and results of this study, I think it's very critical, and, and Steve Wing here um, began to point it out, very, very tough to follow a speaker like Steve Wing, but I'm gonna give it a whack. Um, we have to understand not just the X's and O's of the research we're doing, we have to understand the context of which we're doing it, okay? Yes, there is challenges, there are challenges in calculating dose. In fact, calculating an exact dose is impossible. The best we can do is, is an estimate. Um, yeah, and there are challenges in um, collecting uh, data on harm, on changes in health status and changes in disease and death rates for, for a variety of reasons. So, so these are things that we have to deal with. But I would be remiss if I didn't say that the greatest challenge that we in the research community face is one of corruption. Corruption of the objective scientific method, okay? From the very beginning, from the literally the, the second that um, the Fukushima meltdown began, there was a rush to judgment by a number of people and organizations in authority, the Japanese government, TEPCO, uh, the IAEA, the World Health Organization, to absolutely minimize this disaster, which uh, everyone acknowledges was either the worst or the second worst disaster in, in nuclear history. Um, this was not some s small leak uh, near, near a nuclear plant in, in some isolated area. Um, what, what they, and what the rush to judgment is, is the people immediately jump to the conclusion that these doses are very, very low and very small amounts get in people's bodies and that there is no way that um, humans can be harmed or the harm is going to be very, very minimal. Um, assumptions like this absolutely make hash of the, of the scientific process, of the objective process in, in examining topics like this. Um, the worst thing about it is some of these groups are very high profile, all right? They report this information to the media and the media reports it to the public. And they report it again and again and the public begins to believe this. Okay, even before any studies are done. There, there, in fact, I'll, I'll even say there was, there's one comment by a gentleman, by Dr. John Boise from Vanderbilt University, who said not only are the doses were, are so, so low, there's no way any epidemiological study could detect any increase in any disease from, from Fukushima. So in other words, 
put your pencils away, everybody. Don't, don't do any studies. Um, it is up to us in the more objective uh, areas of, of, of the research community to stand up to this. We need to, first of all, conduct studies immediately, as soon as we can. We need to use whatever data we have, even though it's going to take decades and decades to really find out what the full uh, meaning of, of, of Fukushima was, we have to, we have to start now. And most importantly, we have to get this information out into the public so that they understand we're not dealing with a small leak here. We're dealing with a, an extremely serious situation. Um, the article we did is actually our second article uh, on Fukushima health effects. I'm the co-author with uh, my colleague, Dr. Janet Sherman, who is an esteemed internist and toxicologist. Uh, we picked the topic newborn hypothyroidism. And for those that don't, of you who don't know, hypothyroidism is a condition where the um, level of thyroid hormone is very low and the gland is underactive. When this occurs in uh, newborns, it um, can do great harm to any physical and mental development. Um, they, it's, it's screened for by every state in the United States for the last several decades to, to identify these people and to put them on thyroid hormone immediately to, to avoid some of these, these terrible consequences. Um, two, two elements made up our paper. Number one was dose. Um, again, no, no such thing as a perfect dose, but we used uh, EPA data on what we call gross beta, in other words, all radioactive elements that emit beta uh, that, uh, particles, including uh, radioactive iodine, which, is very, which attacks the thyroid gland. And we also used whatever the EPA data came up with on iodine-131. This was very poor. They only had something like 77 uh, readings of I-131 in precipitation until they, two, two months later, they said, we don't need to, to uh, accelerate any monitor. We're going back to once every, every six months, which, was, which is just a, uh, a, a terrible, terribly poor um, decision on their part. Um, we know hypothyroidism is something that's sensitive to radiation, to, to iodine. We've seen it before and we've documented it in our paper. Uh, experiments on rats years ago, um, people in the South Pacific exposed to atomic bomb fallout, um, people uh, living downwind from Three Mile Island, and people uh, from, and after the Chernobyl accident, all showed in increased uh, levels, uh, rates of hypothyroidism. And we also know that the fetus and the newborn are far, far more sensitive than adults to a particular dose of radiation. So, so this, not to mention the fact that we didn't have much data to choose from at this, at this early date, um, we feel hypothyroidism is, is a good um, disease entity to start with. Um, unfortunately, I had to call up all 50 states, uh, newborn screening programs. I, Yearn for the day when this country has three states instead of 50. Um, 41 states responded. Um, we, we found that the five states on the West Coast and the Pacific, California, Oregon, Washington, Alaska, and Hawaii, tended to have the highest levels of not just gross beta that we found, but other uh, researchers have found high levels in kelp and in soil and, and, and air as well. So we compared the changes, the 20 to 10, 2011 changes uh, in the cases of newborn hypothyroidism for these five states versus the rest of the country, the other 36 states for which we had data. Um, we found the following. We found that in the first 15 weeks after the fallout from Japan arrived in the United States, the number of newborn thyroid hypothyroid cases increased 28% on the West Coast, and for the rest of the year, the last nine months, increased 16.5%.
This is compared to the rest of the country in which we saw a 3% decline. Uh, the differences are statistically significant, although we do point out in the article that these aren't a huge number of cases. In, in a single year in the United States, something like 2,000, 2,200 or so uh, newborn hypothyroid cases are, are detected. Now, um, the, I'm, get, I'm gonna get back to you know, what, why this is important. Um, we, this, this study is, is certainly not an ending to, to the to the research effort for Fukushima. It is very much a beginning. It is a very basic study, all right? But we make very clear that not only are there limits to this study, which any good um, author will do, but there are things we should be doing uh, in the future. More studies on thyroid uh, conditions, such as hypothyroidism, and more studies of um, other conditions uh, of the fetus and the infant, uh, stillbirths, infant deaths, perinatal deaths, um, uh, birth defects, uh, cancer in, in infants, um, low-weight low births and premature births among them. These 2011 data haven't been published yet in the U.S., and the, but within the next few months they will. And again, we need, we need to use these and conduct studies. We need to publish them. We need to, we need to do it promptly. And as I said, we need to bring it to the public. And this is just the United States, by the way. I mean, the, the, the same sort of thing should be going on in Japan, and we're looking into ways to work with Japanese researchers to, to do this kind of work. You know, it's very, very easy to um, forget what we're, we're, we're studying. I, I find this, uh, every so often I have to remind myself of this. Um, we get, I get very caught up in my pencils and my calculators and, and my, my papers and, and so on. We're talking about human beings here. We're talking about um, you know, fe vulnerable fetuses in, in, in pregnant women. We're talking about infants and young children and elderly people who are, whose immune diseases are failing and people with immune conditions and people in general. And th these people have been harmed in Japan and near Fukushima especially, but in other countries as well. They have absorbed these poisons and we need to, to, to remember that because especially if we're, we're seeing hints that low-dose radiation in the United States here may, may have har harmed it. We um, are looking at the possibility of all 104 reactors in this country having the ability to do the same thing uh, in there, um, not just with meltdowns, but with routine emissions. Been in before, before in the past, and uh, Steve mentioned this uh, on, on Three Mile Island. Um, no, after, it, within 12 years after the accident, there were no medical journal articles that were published on cancer before and after the accidents, okay? It wasn't until 12 years after, and, and by that time, 31 articles had been published in, you know, so, journals like Psychosomatic Medicine and, and Trauma and Stress, 31 of them, all dealing with Three Mile Island and all discussing the stress issues. Um, the, the silence was deafening. Finally, a group from Columbia University put out a study. They found that near Three Mile, within the first five years, the cancer, number of cancer cases went up 64%, and they concluded that radiation was not linked to it, was not linked to this increase, it, and they suggested stress. And that, several years later, Steve Wing and his colleagues in North Carolina put out a, uh, a, a wonderful paper uh, showing just the opposite. Um, but by then, it was 18 years after the accident and the mantra, nobody died at Three Mile Island, nobody died at Three Mile Island, nobody died at Three Mile Island, was heard again. And it is still heard today by, by people in authority. Same thing happened with Chernobyl. Um, soon afterwards, when they, uh, the, the firefighters got rid of the fire and, and covered the damaged reactor, uh, 31 um, liquidators 
got absorbed high doses of radiation and died very quickly. And boy, if I had a, a dime for every time I heard the, word, the number 31. Only 31 people died at Chernobyl. Only 31 people died at Chernobyl. And this is while you know, mass suffering was, was being reported um, in the Ukraine and, and Belarus and Russia and, and, and elsewhere. And it wasn't until 2009 when this, this terrific book by Alexei Yablokov, who's one of our speakers here, was put out. His estimate, based on 5,000 um, reports, was 985,000 deaths worldwide. That was nine years ago. He just told me at, at the break that the number has grown ever since. So that is my, um, uh, my final, final word to you. We need to be vigorous as a research community in getting these studies done with using whatever data possible and getting it to the public. Otherwise, as Santa Ana said, we're doomed to repeat history. Thank you very much.